Okay, we're live. I'm Joe Trozian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual. Good morning for May the 3rd, 2023. Uh, we're going to be in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Um, on, on this morning, I was ready to go on earlier. I was ready, uh, but outside the office, there's gardeners and trucks and everything moving around. I had to wait for the doll to die down because uh, my office, the Ram Cave, is not soundproof. But uh, really good to be here, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. We're going to read this, do a brief application, and, uh, and then we're going to pray and get you guys out of here to start your day. Okay, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Again, Paul writing to Timothy in the church of Ephesus. And this is Paul uh, kind of late in his ministry as he's viewing it in the early 60s. Uh, um, you know, I think he's imprisoned here. And I, I should check my notes. I know that. And, uh, and, uh, and, and he's just basically telling Timothy, hey, man, no matter what, you just keep preaching the word. And so we're going to read verses 1 through 5 here and get into it. So Paul says, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season to correct uh, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. This obviously, uh, in my, my old school Bible here, is an underlined passage about keeping focus. And there's just some, some phrases in there that are really, it's all, the whole Bible's transcendent, but that really speak. And, and one of them is, be prepared in season and out of season. And uh, that's always been my takeaway. As long as we're drawing breath, we need to uh, be prepared in season and out of season. And, uh, and that along with great patience and careful instruction. And I think sometimes as we preach the word with our lives or just in discussion, let alone from the pulpit, is uh, we need to show great patience and careful instruction. And that's something I didn't have in my youth. Uh, I think as I've gotten older, I've gained some of that. So the advantage, you know, the gray hair on that one. And, uh, and it's a reminder again, but there are no spiritual holidays, right? There's, there's no catching of 40 winks while standing guard on the wall. And as long as we are drawing breath on this earth, we are in season and we are on the wall. We are uh, standing guard. No spiritual holiday when it comes to guarding our families, when it comes to guarding our loved ones. Uh, and uh, hey, all right. Thank you so much, Kelly McCoy. Uh, and... Uh, Ooh, Lassen National Forest. Good. Drive safe, brother. Thank you so much, Kelly, for clicking on. Um, and uh, so back to what I was saying is that we are we are always in season. You don't get to take a spiritual holiday. We have families to take care of. We have loved ones to guard. We have uh, students and young people that are our responsibility. You know, when we when we dedicate a child in the church, you know, I learned you walk the child up the aisle and what you're asking is, to the congregation, will you be in prayer for this child? You know, will you be in prayer? We're dedicating ourselves to, to being in prayer for the spiritual well-being of this child. Truth always needs to be shared. And the reason it needs to be shared over and over again is because another classic line from this passage is, the time will come when they will not put up with sound doctrine and will turn aside to myths. We see that in our culture today. We see what's happening in our culture is, is people are, are, are so convinced of things that aren't real. We won't go into too much detail. I'll let you extrapolate from that. But also that happens within the church. We're, we're, we're turning away from the truth of scripture to the reason of man. We're turning away from the truth of Jesus to our, uh, you know, professorial uh, heroes, right? Our, our theologians, as if they know more, right? And, uh, and we're not trusting the spirit that God has placed inside of us that is directing us to him. And we're turning aside the myths. So, so be prepared in season and out of season, right? Um, but also with, with great patience and careful instructions, that means don't run hot. Um, lesson learned for Joe T. And 
always know that there, there, there's going to be a time when they won't put up with sound doctrine. But we are required through all of this to keep watch, stand on that wall, remain vigilant, and, vigilant, and uh, to keep our head in all situations. You know, uh, when our intentions are good, uh, even when our faith is strong, we can still lose our heads as believers. Uh, and we often, when we do that, we fall into the category of alarmist. Um, within the church itself, forget about the climate people who've been I will always come after climate people because I've been hearing about climate since 1973. I saw Soylent Green, okay? <laughs> and uh, was that 73 or 72? I don't know. But I remember leaving the theater that night. I'm eight, maybe going on nine years old, and there was an older kid, and he was with his mom, and he was a heavy set kid. I don't know. I, I don't know him, but it's just amazing the things you remember. And this kid's asking his mom as we're walking out of the El Monte walk-in theater, is that how it's going to be, mom? Is that how it's going to be? And that that doom and gloom was already implanted into that, that young person. And I've lived with doom and gloom all my life. I've, I've lived it in the secular, and I've lived it within the church, right? Uh, and, uh, uh, okay, the secular can do what it wants, but this alarmism within the church has got to stop. Uh, we don't need to be alarmed. We know who Jesus is. Uh, uh, we need to be vigilant and on the wall, uh, spiritually watching for our families and our loved ones and the, the cabin, so to speak, that God has uh, placed under our, um, under our uh, protection spiritually for a while, right? Uh, there's people that come and go that God introduces into our lives and that we, we are kind of like their spiritual um, director. I'm not going to say guide, but we, we kind of, we, we are the ones, we're the cabin counselor, so to speak, in their lives. And every situation is not the end of the world. Every presidential election does not usher in the Antichrist. Every situation is not heresy, which would be me drinking coffee in church. Oh my gosh, we're going to hell. You know, uh, uh, you know, did you wear a suit and tie? Did you not wear a suit and tie? Did the women wear jeans? You know, everything is not a crisis. Does the pastor have a beard? Does he shave his head and have a beard? Does he have hard frame glasses? You know, uh, all these things that we get all worked up about it, the churchianity of it all, we can't live in that alarmist state of mind, right? We have to have the ability to keep our head in all situations while remaining vigilant and understand that many of the things that we think are alarmist is youth, inexperience, immaturity, a question of further growth being necessary. Uh, yes, our students are under attack but we need to be sober and deliberate about our faith. And this is why we pray for our young people every day. This is why we live this life that God has called us to live so that uh, we, can, we can do this in such a way with great patience and careful instruction that our relationship with God is daily and we grow through that. And we don't have to become super alarmed by everything we see, but that we remain vigilant, sober, and, uh, and, and, and present for our young people. So we need to pray for our young people today that are going through things that um, are so much worse than, than, than what we grew through. Uh, you go back to the old Brady Bunch episode where they busted Greg smoking a cigarette. I can probably name a thousand parents right now that would say amen, hallelujah, if the only thing my kid did right now was smoke a Marlboro as opposed to everything else that's been flushed onto this culture. And I'll say it flushed because it is it is sewer it is garbage and it's literally being flushed down upon our young people and uh and uh it's pollutant and that pollutant has an effect and it's hurting our young people so we need to pray for them pray for our people that are in those difficult spiritually hostile environments from police stations to military to the halls of government and uh to the teachers in our schools not all of our teachers are leading our kids astray we need to pray for those who, who walk with the Spirit of God and that give them courage and strength. Not all, and I say this over and over again because I am guilty of it, not all of our politicians are evil and corrupt. Many of them are, but not all of them, and we need to pray for the honest ones. All right, so as we come to the 10-minute mark, uh, let's uh, let's get the prayer requests in here. Continue to pray for Piper Morris's son, Grayson, who's battling uh, uh, crabs. Uh, it's, it's called crab uh, leuco, leuco dystrophy. It's called Crab's disease sometimes. Uh, be in prayer for him 
and Piper, his mom, uh, Megan Meeks, one of my students, waiting for answers uh, through the whole uh, medical process. Uh, my friend Jimmy Maldonado, who was with us yesterday, uh, be in prayer for him. He's going through a lot of stuff right now. His brother Ronnie uh, battling uh, a series of strokes recently. Darlene Carroll and her medical issues uh, from the great Northwest. Uh, Kathy Duncan, her friend, who is looking at surgery, hopefully on May 19th, that everything stays healthy. Their mutual friend, Ralph, who's battling COPD. Our folks battling cancer. Tim Burns, uh, up north in NorCal area. Harold and Joyce Perry, Harold retired minister. His wife, Joyce, has inoperable cancer. Also Alzheimer's, and she's in hospice care. Uh, Tammy Mung uh Bill Trollinger, who um, is uh, still in the process of, of battling cancer and is still taking chemo. Um, I spoke to his, uh, his children uh, last night, connected with them last night. And uh, so we're going to continue to pray for Bill. Uh, Becky Valadez, who's still doing radiation treatment, I think, for another week. Uh, Colby Van Dyke uh, and Emmanuel. We want to pray for all of them who are battling cancer, as well as Vision Paradise uh, and Pastor uh, Francis, Pastor Walter, and uh, Edgar and the group at Vision Paradise. Uh, we lift up all of our ministries at Burbank Faith, um, and all the things that we do, including this. Uh, be with us on Sundays. Uh, you could also look at the new website, Burbank Faith Virtual, and get all of our stuff there. Uh, continue to pray for our projects around the church, our church leadership, uh, and, uh, and all the things we, we do in terms of we meet our obligations, folks. We are so grateful for, for your support in meeting our obligations. Uh, just pray for us financially as we, we take on the tasks of maintaining uh, this property. Uh, not for our generation as much as for the next generation to come, which we believe there will be. Also pray for Vision, not Vision Paradise. Yes, pray for Vision Paradise, but pray also for Granite Ridge. And I dropped the the 90 hours of prayer uh, into the comment box. Please click on that. No one's going to ask you for personal information. We're just trying to fill in all those prayer slots. There's 360 prayer slots. That's four prayer slots in 15 minutes blocks for 90 hours and if you can uh fill those for us we would be grateful since 2018 when we started the outsiders uh ministries at granite ridge i'm the director of that since we started that uh we've had every one of our kids camp covered in prayer and what we don't cover uh through the sign up we cover uh as a staff and we we've had staff up middle of the night so if you're on the east coast my friends in north carolina uh, Ohio, uh, in different places, Kentucky, Florida, those that watch us, if you could, uh, could pick up a morning shift, a couple of morning shifts, uh, uh, you know, at 6 a.m. your time, 7 a.m. your time, that covers us at 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. out here. That would really, really help us. Okay, uh, let's pray, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll get you folks, get you folks going. Lord, we do thank you again for today, Lord, and Lord, help us to be vigilant, not alarmists, but vigilant and sober, uh, and understanding that we need to preach the word with our lives. And uh, so, Lord, let us uh, look to each day as a new opportunity, and if it becomes tiresome, Lord, we sense it becoming a grind, Lord, it's because maybe we've lost a little bit of touch with you, and Lord, uh, let us remain in touch with you daily, and uh, as a church, and as a people. Uh, Lord, we just again thank you for blessing us and bless our kids at school today, Lord. And infiltrate their space, Lord. Um, Lord of hosts, we, we know that you're going to do battle physically and spirit in the spiritual realm. Lord, let us uh, do battle by uh, understanding that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against uh, 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 the spiritual forces that influence this world. And so, Lord, let us speak your truth boldly, lovingly, and... and uh, Really, uh, let your truth expose the fraudulence of this world. Be with our young people today. Protect them physically as well as spiritually. And those people who work in these hostile environments, Lord, give them courage. Uh, and uh, we pray for those that are going through illness today, Lord. We pray for Piper and Grayson. We pray for uh, we pray for Megan Meeks. We pray for Jimmy Maldonado, his brother Ronnie. We pray for Darlene and Kathy, who's facing surgery soon. Our cancer folks, Tim Burns, uh, Joyce Perry, uh, Tammy. Uh, Bill, Becky, Rachel, Colby, and Emmanuel. Uh, Lord, uh, we pray also for uh, Vision Paradise and the ministry there, our future Armenian ministry, and all the ministries at Burbank Faith, Lord. Um, we thank you for the faithful people 
that serve there at Burbank Faith, Lord. Find us faithful in meeting all of our obligations and uh, in, in preparing uh, that sacred space for future ministry. Uh, Lord, we ask for Granite Ridge Home Camp and for a summer camp and CIT, for the leadership of those, as well as a youth camp. Lord, bless us today uh, and uh, bless those camps this summer. Bless our churches, bless our homes, bless our schools, bless our country. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Okay, 15 minutes. Ah, I did it. I did it a minute sooner today than I did uh, than I did yesterday. I think I went 16 minutes yesterday. All right. God bless. Take care. Please, as you see this, folks, today, leave likes, leave comments, um, hit share because it keeps us in the algorithm. We are seeing a little change in the algorithm. You know, we have it goes up and it goes down. And one of the things that keeps us keeps us present is comments, likes, and shares. All you got to do is hit the little share button there and say, hey, this came from Burbank Faith, you know, and uh, and we'd appreciate it. Also, we'll be loading this up on all of our other social media platforms, including Instagram, links on Twitter, as well as BurbankFaithVirtual.com. All right. God bless. Take care. And we will see you soon.